Nice to meet you. Great to be here. Dwango AC. Yes. The biggest star in the world. This is the biggest <laughs> star in the world. <laughs> no. I'm just his keeper. You're Dwango AC. I don't know if uh, some people already had the opportunity to see the work that you've done uh, in the past, but um, we had the opportunity that you could visit us in a studio. We're just a little speedrun show from Germany. And um, you, of course, are jetting around the world together with your little body here. And uh, what, what exactly is it you're doing for the people who don't know you? Uh, so I am several things. I am on staff as the ambassador for TASVideos.org. Mm -hmm. TASVideos is a website devoted to tool-assisted speedruns, mm -hmm. the process of playing a game perfectly with no problems of human skill, memory, reflexes, luck. Who needs this? Well, Nobody. <laughs> We do our work for task videos on an mm -hmm. emulator, but what I'm doing is showing the game being played on an original Nintendo. So everything that is going to happen today is being done on real hardware. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's the special thing. Um, uh, we, of course, are talking also about uh, the big um, showcases like AGDQ, SGDQ here on, on Speedrandale. And we had the opportunity to see runs that were you did with uh, TASBOT already. And we had uh, um, um, a TASBOT runner here, or a TAS runner, so to speak, because he didn't have the nice robots here. <laughs> So um, who, who, who's been doing, yeah, who's been doing it on an emulator? But you're doing the special thing. That's because so you have your original NES hardware here with original cartridges, and you're feeding the stuff to the computer. And then there is a pre-programmed sequence that other people, very capable people, made so that they can speed run the game in the fastest and most impossible way. Yeah, that's a good way of describing it. What you do with a tool-assisted speedrun in an emulator is you have the ability to try over as many, many times as you like. Mm -hmm. So if you play through and save a state, we call it a, a save state, and then play, play through and hit a Goomba, for instance, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. you're not going as fast as you'd like, you can at any moment press a key to go backward in time mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. that state and try again. We call it doing a re-record or restoring the save state. You might do this tens of thousands of times in the process of iteratively walking your way forward, getting the result you want. And at the end, what you have is, you could call it art, mm -hmm. uh, but it's nothing more than a sequence of button presses. The one thing that I'm doing that's different here is I'm playing it back on real hardware, and it's a lot like a player piano. Mm -hmm. If you've ever seen a music box or a player piano with a piano scroll, it's a piece of paper with holes punched in it, and as the paper goes through a player piano, it plays a sequence of notes to play back a song. What I'm going to be demonstrating here is a sequence of button presses mm -hmm. in order that we'll be playing back on the console to play back a game. Yeah, from start to finish. So essentially you have the pre-recorded sequences on the computer here, but you're feeding it through the controller. That's why yeah, I think you have a light up controller yes. light up here. So you see which button is being pressed actually. And then it's fed through the controller port right into the console. So if somebody were able to replicate exactly this button presses, you could do it just on a normal console like, That's uh, like this. Um, the runs that we're going to see here, we, um, uh, fortunately you brought enough time w with you in some uh, games that we're going to do uh, multiple episodes here. Um, this episode we're going to show some um, Mario runs on the NES. And these are not runs that you made specifically yourself, but these are runs of other people. That's correct. And you uh, converted it, so to speak, so that you can um, run it through your device here. Yeah. That's correct. The particular run I'm going to start with, as you uh, might be seeing shortly, is Super Mario Brothers 2. Mm -hmm. This is a warpless run. Mm -hmm. It was made by Aglar and Andrew G and mm -hmm. submitted to TAS Videos. All content on TAS Videos is released under a Creative Commons Attribution 2.0 license, which means that I'm able to show it here as long as I say where it came from and mm -hmm. who made it. Mm -hmm. The authors spent a lot of time making this particular run. In this particular case, their re-record count, in other mm -hmm. words, the number of times that they'd backed up and tried again, was 26,553 times. It's a weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Or 500 weekends. So the interesting thing about a human speedrun is you might grind it out mm -hmm. over the course of 
many weeks of practicing. In the case of a game like Super Mario Brothers 3, which met with Mitch Flower Power, mm -hmm. who's a friend of mine, he spent 10,000 hours or some absurd amount. <sighs> It, 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 but, it, but it shows, it shows. It shows. Yeah, it shows. <laughs> it's, we, he started figuring out how many hours he had played Super Mario Brothers 3, and he calculated that he had probably played it 10,000 hours, and that, which is way higher than most people. I, I believe him, but uh, you're alluding to, of course, if you want to play it like this, you have to have the constant training. If you're doing it in a test, you can at, let it rest a bit, you can go later, you can, yes. when you have the, the mental... Uh, the the mental facilities to to just think about it how this this is going to work and then you can take your time to make such a speed right. run. The yeah? difference is this definitely took many 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 hours to make, but you have all the time in the world to perfect it, mm -hmm. and it takes a different set of skills to be a real time runner than it does to be a speed runner. In particular. A uh, speedrunner needs very, very good reflexes, twitch reflexes, if you will, hence the name of a particular mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. But Never heard of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you are doing a tool-assisted speedrun, those tools mean that that twitch reflex no longer matters. Mm -hmm. When you're doing a tool-assisted speedrun, it's almost like using what I would call a corded keyboard. Mm -hmm. Say you're trying to run right for great justice. You're playing a Mario game, and your job is to press the run button and the right button. You're going to hold both of those buttons down on a keyboard mm -hmm. where you've mapped the keys to the original buttons on an actual controller. Mm -hmm. And you're going to press another button that says, okay, I'm pressing right and B. You press one more button to advance a single frame. Mm -hmm. In NTSC consoles from the United States, they run at 60 frames per second. PAL consoles from Europe use a 50 frames per second equivalent. But a single frame is, at least for this console, 16 milliseconds long, 16.6 milliseconds long. Mm -hmm. It's a 60th of a second. Mm -hmm. You're holding down the keys you want for just that one frame and then advancing a frame and seeing if you like the result. Okay, and if you, you don't tap. like it, you get back, you Typically, see. Typically, yeah. Yeah, and from the test runs I've seen, I think the stuff you're going to show today, maybe I've seen it years ago and I forgot it already, but I'm always very impressed because um, there's, uh, we're going to discuss it when the run starts because we have time then, because we're not playing this much uh, underneath, but uh, there's some discussions about um, how are test runs perceived uh, compared to, to, so to speak, real runs, because, but that's not kind of the, the, the right description because a test run is also a real run. This is just a different kind of category um you wanted to start with mario 2 yeah? i do I'm let's, let's start with mario 2 and, run. yeah and then we're going to discuss the game and a little bit about test running yeah? so, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to hold down the reset button so when i hold this reset button and start sending button presses to the console mm -hmm. when i let go of the reset button uh then the, the time starts so to speak yeah pretty much so three two one go all right so this is a warpless run made by Aglar and Andrew G. It's actually a little bit of an older run. Mm -hmm. It has not been surpassed. What's interesting about real-time runs is they're often improved over time, and, and you always have a little bit of, of, of wiggle room to make things faster. Mm -hmm. As you can see, the gameplay you're, you're seeing here is really precise. A human runner would not necessarily be able to, to move as quickly and as smoothly as, the, as you see here. Also, there are some glitches that you can take advantage of, like this one right here, where you okay. shove yourself through the floor. Of, of course, of course. Some runs <laughs> are what we call RTA viable. In other words, real-time speed viable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of the runs that are done by humans are influenced by tricks discovered through making a tool-assisted speed run. Yeah, the, the good thing with uh, doing such, uh, such a tool-assisted speedrun is it shows what is capable in the engine. Stuff right. that wasn't supposed to be done by humans, so to speak, but sometimes there are things that can be found out that can be translated for stuff that people can do. Maybe very capable people, but uh, it it's also helps influence uh, other mate runs. Yeah? That's right. Well, this particular run is all the way from 2011, there are probably only a few frames that could be improved. Mm -hmm. And in fact, having talked to other members of our community like Maru, there are known improvements to this task, but not many. Mm -hmm. 
So th this test would be um, the baseline for other people trying to do that's a correct. test? That's uh, one of so the reasons that it's that's under Creative Commons. Creative yeah. Commons mm -hmm. Right. As long as you provide attribution, you can build on the work of others, mm -hmm. which I really like that sampling aspect, and it, and it helps a lot. Now, um, that was deliberate, mm -hmm. <laughs> as you might okay. have imagined. Okay, okay. It looks pretty strange, though. A lot of times you see using damage to take time in ways that would be a far too risky for a mm -hmm. human to mm -hmm. do. I imagine if a human could pull that twi that trick off, they, they would probably do it. I, I regret to say that I'm not as familiar with this specific run enough to know for certain <laughs> if, in fact, that is an RTA viable run mm -hmm. or, or technique. Mm -hmm. But so there's some other things. We know exactly where the door is going to be. With frame precision, we entered that door the very first opportunity it was possible to do so. And the very first trap you could do it. Yeah, exactly. that's, that's always kind of... It adds up over time, because such small things that can be done perfect in a tool-assisted speedrun, like entering a door or, let's say, um, catching the ball at Castlevania or something, this is stuff, of course, you can train it as a, as a normal speedrunner, so to speak, but you're losing always a little bit of time here and there, and at the end it adds up. What's fascinating about this particular run is Andrew G is well known in the RTA community for having an extremely fast time on the original Super Mario Brothers. Mm -hmm. His his time of SMB1 is within a few seconds of the tool assisted speedrun. Okay. He's a very rare crossover that has the patience to do tool assisted speedruns mm -hmm. and the twitch skills to be a real time runner. <laughs> But that doesn't necessarily mean that there aren't a lot of people who do both things, uh, or that there aren't a lot of people that uh, that communicate back and forth between the two communities. Oftentimes, the route that is used in the in the first attempt at a tool assisted speedrun was developed by real time runners, mm -hmm. and very often, as the task is made, glitches are found that are then incorporated into real time runs, and it's a very symbiotic cycle. Yeah, especially um, you uh, talked about Mario Bros. 1 or Super Mario Bros. 1. Mm -hmm. um, that specifically, there are a lot of videos around that it's been analyzed uh, to hell and back, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> and um, with all the waiting for the times the buses are coming and these and everything. So there's very specific stuff that can only be found out if it's analyzed, like being made for a test run or uh, really stripped down. And otherwise, it wouldn't be possible just to know about these things, how to improve on it. As you said, if yeah, um, the guy who made the run uh, came within uh, very little time to the test run of Super Mario Bros. 1, then it has to be a very, very capable fellow. Yes, Andrew G is extremely capable. That looks very funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, to this particular character runs faster while holding an enemy, so that's why you'll frequently oh, okay. see Toad being used. Yeah, it's more, most of the time. Yeah, you have differences yeah. in the characters here. Um, I think I used normally back in the day uh, Luigi because he jumped far, mm -hmm. or the princess because she could levitate a little mm -hmm. bit. But of course it's sensible if you don't need this assistance to use the character who's just the fastest. In fact, you won't see the princess used at all in mm -hmm. the speedrun because she is one of the slowest characters. And here you'll see uh, some, uh, some enemy tricks there to mm -hmm. be able to To avoid slide them down. just yep. in the set. Yeah, alright. Yep. and all kinds of speed tricks that are just so mm -hmm. much fun to watch. That guy drove me crazy when I was a kid. The mask flying around. Yeah, totally. Around. Was uh, very scary. Yes, that was a pretty nifty trick where you can, on the same frame you go through the door, you can pick up the enemy. Mm -hmm. Which was very time-saving. And then that's just showing off. <laughs> uh, the, the run into the mouth, that was timed exactly so that the very first frame you could go through the door was the first frame you uh, or the, 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 yeah. Yeah, so to get in the very first frame, and now it was quite a fast uh, boss fight here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Essentially one hit, but he got all the, his hits in with the way he threw the um, thing there. Correct. There's uh, some sure. things I want to talk about, mm -hmm. about what you're seeing on the screen. One of the things that is different about this console compared to what I experienced as a kid is it looks really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, now this is absurd. This is, uh, <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> because you can. <laughs> I, it's it's early Monday here. <laughs> I'm not quite woke up, so it, I could be dreaming this, but it feels quite surreal now. 
Yes. Um, yeah, you were talking about the quality of the console, of course. Is, this is a real NES, yeah? Yes, this is a real NES. Now, this is what's called a US top loader. This particular console has a single modification done to it. Mm -hmm. The raw RGB, red, green, blue color is being extracted from the video board, mm -hmm. uh, the PPU. And it's uh, it's been modified with a connector so that we can get to SCART. And from SCART, I'm going into an OSSC, an mm -hmm. Open Source Scan Converter, which is possibly visible right here. That particular unit is converting the analog RGB signal over SCART to HDMI, which is then being fed into the rest of the broadcast equipment here in the studio. How was it? Um, I, I used back in the day with my console always RGB SCART here in Europe mm -hmm. because it was the best possible signal. You could right. get here very sharp, sometimes a bit too sharp for mm. some of the games. Um, was it a progressive signal or an interlaced one? That's what's the most interesting about the original Nintendo and even the Super Nintendo. We call them 240p. One thing you, you can see mm -hmm. is that this says it's 262p. Mm -hmm. 262p. That's the number of, Never heard of it. <laughs> horizontal lines that mm -hmm. are being detected. And what's what this is doing is it's line doubling. As you probably have have experienced, old CRT monitors used an interesting technique to be able to fluidly display an image on the screen. Mm -hmm. They were interlaced. They would show every odd number line, and then they would go back to the top and draw every even li number line. Yeah, it flickers very fast, so you have yes. the impression there's a real uh, a warm exactly, full image. Exactly, as the phosphor would retain the image. What's fascinating about what Nintendo did is they made it progressive. Mm -hmm. They did 60 frames per second by making it 240 lines instead of 480. So they halved the number of lines, mm -hmm. and in this case it's a little bit weird, it's, it's 262 lines, but... Um, there was something called overscan, where the actual area you could see was smaller than uh, than the area being drawn, and that was to hide the places on the edges where the the CRT gun, uh, yeah, it would it would go too far. Yeah, and every, then go every, to the next line. Yeah, every, every CRT overshoot. television had a different thing, so there was always... Yeah, and there if, was, if you had games, if you had um, television shows or something, you always had a little bit of overscan that was supposed to be cut yeah, off. Yeah, because you didn't want to see the jagged edges. So they would make games with the expectation that you couldn't see all of them. So mm -hmm. it, it's it's kind of a complicated bit of, of history, but effectively what Nintendo did is they took an interlaced CRT but gave it effectively a progressive image because... Mm -hmm. They're, they're sending the same lines over and over again. Mm -hmm. And that means that on an original CRT, you would see um, some interesting combing-like effects. But the raw console is running at a full 60 frames per second. Mm -hmm. So by getting extracting this RGB signal, we're getting all of those progressive frames. This is running at a full 60 frames per second. So it would have been kind of a fake interlaced mode that's been sent out originally. Yes. And you, now yes. you can benefit from the modern uh, advances so you can get a really clear signal out of the NES. And yeah, we had already worked with an OSSC here, but uh, I wasn't able to get the signal to work. Play nice with the stuff. You thankfully have already more experience with yeah. everything here. It's, it's it's very very impressive because we were back in the day either either playing with the RF uh, connectors so to get the console through the channel or otherwise with composites, and that was the best you could get out of an NES. And to see an original console, of course, a newer model, but um, it's still 25 to 30 years old. <laughs> Um, to see it to, to look as good and to work with all your th stuff you have here. <laughs> this is <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> just so much silliness going on in this it's, game. It's, it's frying my brain. Yeah, that happens a lot. Uh, and that's the fun thing about tool assisted speedruns is they're pushing the hardware, the physical mm -hmm. console, and the, the software, the code, the actual game as it was written. I'll say this slightly odd. Sometimes mm -hmm. people accuse me of cheating. Or, I also make tool-assisted speedruns. Mm -hmm. I, have made, I have released my own runs and been told I was cheating. Well, no. This is exactly the way the game was coded, mm -hmm. whether the original authors knew it or not. Mm -hmm. Everything they wrote and released is, uh, is intact. It's just they didn't know it operated this way. Yeah, they, when, when you use it, you use it like, you use what's there. Yes. And that's, that's where you're... 
We never modify the game code with something like a game genie, for instance. So we're never changing how this works. We don't insert something between the cartridge, which contains the read-only memory of the game, and the console. So the modifications we've done to this console are exclusively quality of life. Just, just the video out yes. and stuff like this. this not, not some game genie in there or something. Yeah, yeah, this particular console also has a cable that we've specifically made. This is, uh, looks like a headphone jack mm -hmm. and a couple of wires. Mm -hmm. For runs that use it, we can connect this to our, this specially modified console to reach the reset line. Okay. So instead of physically pressing a reset button, Passbot can, can press the button. And so that allows us to do runs that might do a soft reset for various reasons. Exactly, yeah. There's some runs where you have to save, do a soft reset, restart the game or Correct. something. Um, uh, you have uh, been to quite a bit of the big, I want to say tournaments, but then the tournaments like AGDQ, SGDQ, uh, the, yeah. the big showcases. Fundraiser, charity runs. The fundraiser, runs, the yes. cha charity runs and everything there. If we're going to do one here, you're of course welcome to come over well, again. Well, I, I did come over for European Speedrunner Assembly, mm -hmm. Speedrunning Assembly. That was in Malmö. Sweden. In Sweden, yeah. Yes, that was just a few days before the recording of this episode, mm -hmm. and we in fact showed Super Mario Brothers 2, mm -hmm. but not how you're seeing it here. Not not this version here, no. but a different <laughs> version. But um, uh, maybe we'll show you that. <laughs> we have to see you now. First, when we finish this up here, it shouldn't take that long anymore. I think. No, we're we're coming up. Uh, what's our current? We're about 13. 30 minutes. This whole run will be complete in less than five. Okay, well, it's a little bit faster than my time because my first speedrun was uh, five months. <laughs> no, I, t I took to finish to finish the game. No, but but you were it's like the ESA, like the mm -hmm. SGDQ, AGDQ runs there, and there you're presenting different runs with uh, the test bot. How did you come to uh, the idea to do this this way? It's a really interesting question. So first of all, Taskbot is sitting here on the table. He has been my buddy for the last several years. I first started working with this setup more or less, in mm -hmm. 2013, in preparation for AGDQ 2014. Awesome Games Done Quick 2014, okay. uh, gamesdonequick.com. Okay. I know I'm, I'm chilling a little bit. <laughs> that's that's no problem. We, we love uh, <laughs> the work all the people and all the runners are doing over there. And uh, you specifically chose uh, Rob to be the visual yes. representation because you needed something to be um, the face of test speedrunning. Otherwise, it's right. not, not really corporeal. No one's pushing buttons and other, otherwise people are sitting there and watching. He's doing the work, so to speak, then. At that time, things were very different. I was not on staff for task videos, and I had seen Games Done Quick events and found them to be very fascinating. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be there myself, so I had this crazy idea of becoming a speedrunner, mm -hmm. and I tried to practice the game Scribble Knots Unlimited. Ooh. And I discovered yeah. very quickly, first of all, it wasn't a good speedrun game, and second of all, I'm not that fast with a mouse. Mm -hmm. So. I quickly abandoned that idea, remembered my tasking roots because I had been part of task videos since 2008, more on that part when we mm -hmm. get to Super Mario Bros. 3. And I remembered, hey, there's there's this work going on to show tool-assisted speedruns being done on real hardware. Mm -hmm. At that time, there were a couple of devices that were uh, functional. Uh, that people had built to, to do what we call console verifications. Mm -hmm. or replay devices that could pretend to be a controller. And I can get into a lot of detail on how we're doing what we're doing, but as a brief statement, I knew that these existed and I decided, hey, what would it look like if I went to Games Done Quick and showed Tool Assisted Speedruns? Mm -hmm. Because of some controversy, which I'll get into later when we're talking about Super Mario Bros. 3, there was some resistance to that. A lot of people were not thrilled with the idea of having something that wasn't pure human skill. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah. And ultimately, the organizers of Games Done Quick said, yes, let's try it. And they accepted a couple of runs into AGDQ 2014. In the process of, of setting up for that, I worked with True and other folks and in Task Videos community, in the Task Videos community, to make a replay device, a mm -hmm. new one, that was a little bit less... Uh, I would use the word janky a little less unreliable than a breadboard, a, a just bunch of wires shoved in, mm -hmm. connected to an Arduino. Uh, so we built a board specific to you, specifically to use at the event, 
and it was pretty obvious we needed some way to to hold all the cables and everything. And uh, I believe Adelicat, who is the main site admin of TAS Videos, was one of a couple of people that suggested we get a mascot. And I don't know if it was Adelicat or someone else, but the idea of using a Rob came up. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was doing everything in Linux with a Raspberry Pi. So we had a Raspberry Pi and a replay device. And I'm like, okay, well, I've got a Rob robot now. Uh, let's call him Robberry Pi. Mm -hmm. And everyone thought that was a terrible name. So Mecha Richter pops up in the forums and said, I'm loving me this Taskbot action. And the name Taskbot it, stuck. It kind of stuck. It yeah. stuck. It's, it's, I didn't intend for him to be this way. He's now any combination of a replay device and some Legos, a visualization board, which is a controller. We've replaced the, the buttons with, uh, with LEDs so you mm -hmm. can see what buttons mm -hmm. are being pressed. We've gone through several iterations. We went through an iteration with Micro 500 with the TaskLink board. Mm -hmm. uh, that's who made this visualization board. The most recent replay device that you're seeing here that with this nice 3D printed case is called the Task TM32 replay device. It is a, uh, with a 3D printed case, it was made by Onosaurus with code on the software side written by the MAS 3212. This particular device is really nice. Oh, we're already here. Um, <laughs> I, I've been using Final this device time. at yep. the last three or four events now, and uh, we're still using the, re the visualization boards made by Micro500, uh, who's stepped away from the community, but mm -hmm. has done really good work, and we continue to use that. Um, but we do have one minor problem. Taskbot is still a Rob, and we're not sure how much longer Nintendo is going to let us get away <laughs> so with that. So that. that's that would have been my questions. Uh, <laughs> so, otherwise, so I say, one, what is the time? Time is when he. Uh, I think time is when he goes through the door on this game. Right here is time. Okay. So that was 18:33. Real time, so to speak, but so the actual time 18:29. 18, 18, 18:29. Yeah. 18, I think I probably, it probably was when he went through the yeah, door. Yeah, we, we said we're gonna have the counter here run just to have a visual That's representation. Okay. That, that would have been my question exactly. If uh, did someone hear from Nintendo back? Because if people are so, not familiar uh, with Rob, I, everyone I talk to at Nintendo when they do show up at Games Done Quick type events, they tend to be very uh, interested in in saying, "Hey, don't." Don't worry, everyone inside of the company really likes what you do. We love what you remix. But, but nobody can say, hey, do it. <laughs> but there are some aspects of other parts of the company, their legal team in particular, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that are not necessarily as keen on it. Now, everything we're doing here, at least in the United States where I'm based, is legal. Mm -hmm. And we'll get more into that in a second. But I want to do another Super Mario Brothers 2 okay. one. Because uh, I said that you could do things that are not possible for a human to do, and I want to demonstrate that. Yeah, this was already some very particular stuff, but yes. now... This particular run we're about to see has okay. not been seen at any event. This specific payload has okay. never been shown at a Games Done Quick. Can uh, also let the time run down. Yeah, okay. You can, but it won't matter. You'll see why in a second. Yeah, let me... J just to, to be on the safe side. Sure. So... Let's see what Sorry about doing. your timer there. Don't yeah. worry, it's pretty irrelevant. Um, so we're moving these enemies around for a reason. Mm -hmm. Actually, we're moving all of these items around for a very specific reason. And that is because we want to do... This. Okay, this is the final screen now. A little glitched, a oh. little glitched. Don't worry, the graphics clear up as soon okay, as it gets okay. to the next screen. Uh, that is uh, that, that is the whole thing, I believe. Okay, it's... That is, then it's yeah, 20 seconds. Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, <laughs> so I, I had seen similar things, not exactly this one here, but uh, of course there's a lot of crazy stuff you can do with the speed of the inputs you can mm -hmm. give in there. I think there was a time at 1GDQ where there was the Super Mario World being reprogrammed to have the Twitch chat or something something like this. So, or uh, maybe I don't recall it uh, quite exactly how it was, but uh, you can do very specific, almost reprogramming stuff with the speed of the inputs there. Yeah. That's right. Um, so I'm seeing if, by the way, I can show you another payload. Yeah. We will, we will hold that back for just a second. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes. Uh, I'm actually going to pause here for Super Mario Brothers 2. Mm -hmm. I think I'd like to move over to Super Mario Brothers yeah. 3. Sure. Which one of the two? That I'm you have use. here. Because we have two one. Yes. 
I brought two copies. Two now, copies. One of the things that's, that's interesting is that I have specific requirements. Mm-hmm. There are different versions of some games, and in this case, there's PRG0 and PRG1. And I think that I have the right hands here. Uh, the only markings are very, very tiny. Next to yeah. where it says Rev A, there's a tiny imprint. Yeah, I don't think you can, see it. You can see it on camera, but yeah, it's, yeah, it is a tiny imprint there. And yeah. I, it's, it says revision A on both. It's, everything is the same except this little imprint here. Yeah, it's just a tiny little mark. So uh, these are different versions of the same game. I'm going to use this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, which has been drawn on by someone, unfortunately. I, it's Zach's game. It's Zach's game. I'm yeah. sorry, Zach. You wrote on your cartridge, and we know all about it now. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, this is not my original cartridge. I had one that was specific to me, mm-hmm. and uh, let me get to this. Okay, uh, I had one that was my own cartridge. I'm, I'm just going to turn the console on so they get an image here on screen. Mm-hmm. Uh, I regret to say that it was pilfered uh, during AGDQ 2015. So, oh, man. Uh, and it was very special to me for a very specific reason, which I'll explain as we go through this. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm going to start Super Mario Brothers 3, if they're ready. We're going to do it in so. 3, 2, 1, go. All right. So this particular game is really important. Mm-hmm. In 2003, before YouTube existed, in the primordial ooze of the internet, mm-hmm. someone named Morimoto released a video that said Super Mario Bros. with an extra S 3 Time Attack. I, th- I think I've seen it. Yes. I think that's, that's a the lot one, of one, one, one of the first um, speedrun videos I've seen. Correct. And the problem with this video is it was not released with any context of what it was. Mm-hmm. A lot of people who were watching the very poor quality Windows Media uh, file, w- Windows Media video file, mm-hmm. WMV, didn't know that it was made in the Fantasia emulator. Mm-hmm. And as a result, this this run that did the most ridiculous things ever was distributed around the internet without people really having a firm understanding of what they were seeing. Certainly, the concept of tool-assisted speedruns at that time was virtually unknown. That, by the way, is a massive time-saving strategy there. Uh, so you, this is a warps run of the game. There's not going to be any trickery or weird things here. Mm-hmm. This is the same general route that uh, that is used by... Um, yeah, if, if you're playing it normally, get the two warp yeah. loots and then get to World 8, and then you play it normally there. But there's a couple of things that are useful for us. You see, you see that Hammer Brother there. Mm-hmm. He is random. Or at least kind of how he's moving on the world map. Either you meet him or you don't meet him. Yeah? Yes, but because of something that I'll explain later with the pseudo random number generator, we can force him to do exactly what we want. So right here, he will only move one space because we made him move only one space mm-hmm. by our actions. I'll get into more of that in a second. The particular run that Morimoto did back in 2003 led to some substantial controversy because it was in reality made with a tool-assisted speedrun-capable emulator named Fantasia that had very primitive tools. Mm -hmm. Rather than the frame advance I talked about earlier, it simply had the ability to play the game in slow motion. Mm -hmm. But it was still very much using tools, even if they were somewhat primitive. And a lot of people in the real-time community were extremely upset because this run... Oh, that's an interesting <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. Yes, flipping your tail at the same time that you get a one-up causes that glitch sound. A lot of people in the real-time community saw it as simply fraudulent, as, as just something that was an aberration that never should have been made. Others, however, saw art in what, what was done. And one of those people was Bizquit. He created the website NES Videos. Dot com. Well, not originally .com, it was actually at a different address, but mm-hmm. he made a website to catalog tool-assisted speedruns and did one very specific thing that helped a lot. He specifically made sure that every single video that was encoded had a disclaimer saying, this is a tool-assisted speedrun. Mm-hmm. And really, the reason there was controversy is because it was akin to the doped Olympics. If you had someone show up at the Olympics who was doping, who was using enhancements, and they didn't tell anyone they did it, that wouldn't be very fair. And that's why the real-time community was so upset about this this new thing that had happened from Morimoto. It looked so 
dirty to them. And the reality is, if you're going to compete in the doped Olympics, you need to tell people that you've been doping. <laughs> in yeah, this case, I, otherwise everybody has to be doped. Yeah, then, then, well, it's, then it's equal again. That would make for a very interesting show, but let's not do it. <laughs> There's a lot of moral quandaries <laughs> good, there. Good kind of show. Um, so, Task Videos became the ultimate website mm -hmm. at the end of the day. NES Videos became Task Videos, hosting tool-assisted speedruns for a variety of different consoles. And today, you can go to Task Videos and find everything from Wii games, Linux games that are, are Steam games that have been ported to Linux, more on that later, games for unusual handhelds, all kinds of things. And some of them, we can even show, are being done on emulators that are so accurate mm -hmm. that we can get the same result on a real console. One thing that a lot of people say we do is cheating is is our luck where we manipulated say the hands in in the in Super Mario Brothers 3 yeah or how random encounters occur yes. in Dragon Quest or something things like that and the hands in particular are a good example because there's a if you statistically take your odds of how likely you are to get through all three hands in Super Mario Brothers 3 the odds are not good it's something like 1.2% of all runs We'll have zero hands. Yeah, you're speaking about uh, when we think it's after this level, yes. there's a part you cross a bridge, and Correct. there you have the possibility that the hands coming yeah. out and to grab you and let you play an enemy a level or something. And as you said, it's a very low possibility to get over this bridge and not getting an enemy. If you would be doing a real run, so to speak, that would be the run killer. Yes. Otherwise, because uh, you would getting su such a huge time, it's so right so here. Now it is. And now we had luck. Exactly. Now, how did we get that luck? Well, the answer is we completely control everything from the purposes of, of seeding the random number generator. So let me explain it this way. Mm -hmm. These consoles had no real-time clock. They had no way of retaining state from one game to the other with, uh, with any kind of consistency, mm -hmm. although you could put a battery inside of a cartridge and be able to save game data that way. But most of the time you had no real-time clock. So there wasn't any easy way to use time as a seed for a random number generator. Uh, in other words, the only source of entropy, the only source of randomness, was the player themselves. Mm -hmm. Some things you want to have random in the game, like whether or not the hand appears. To get a random number number out of nothing, out of out of no randomness, what they do is take what button presses you have you, you have pressed the number of frames that have elapsed since mm -hmm. the beginning of the game, other characteristics, and they shove it into an algorithm that takes that, twists it around, and you get a random number out of the out So of the time. it feels random, but it really isn't. Right. Yeah? And a lot of things are very primitive. On the Nintendo especially, the original Nintendo, a lot of things are done in values of 256, where you could have a single byte in memory that could be one value out of 256, and mm -hmm. maybe you say, if it's these lower values, then this result happens, and if these higher values, then the, this result happens, and so on and so forth. So maybe you might code it and say, hey, pseudo random number generator, give me a random number. Okay, I put this in memory, now I compare this. Does this value have these characteristics? Is it low enough, for instance? And if it is, then that random thing will happen. This really depends on what you're trying to do in the game, but it's just a way of introducing randomness from a console that doesn't have any built-in way to do random things. A couple of other newer consoles used very unique methods like sampling microphones, Listen, which is kind of creepy if you think mm -hmm, about it. Mm -hmm. um, but in this case, because we fully control all possible methods of randomness, we are making this console deterministic. That, by the way, is a newly discovered method of getting through this level. You get through this fight slower, but you made it under those spikes faster. So it equals out and you're a little bit faster in the end, yeah? Yes, and you also don't have to be... Yeah, yeah. you don't have to duck down and wait for the conveyor belt. So that's one of the most recent improvements. So this is the same exact route as the run that happened in 2003. Mm -hmm. It's just been iteratively improved over time. And this particular run was made by... Uh, let me pull this up. This was a recently submitted run. In fact, it might even still be on 
the workbench waiting for publication. See? Oh yeah, this one's not even out yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this particular run it's that premiere. I'm showing you is very it's fresh. A, it's a premiere. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, it is. Get down here. Oops. Uh, SMB3. Here we go. This was made by... Oh, nope, that's the game end glitch. Where did Mario 3 go? I guess it is not already. It has, in fact, already been uh, been published, which is fine. Uh, Mario... Ah, okay. Now, uh, th one of the things that can be kind of interesting about test videos is there are new submissions all the time. Mm -hmm. It's actually a very active community. Uh, let me pull up the right one. I believe several people collaborated on this one. Uh, while I'm searching for that, we're very near the end of this run already, which is... Yeah, what, what was interesting, you already talked about the controversy that was back then. Um, uh, since we started doing this show here in Germany, of course, speedruns are getting bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have also this discussion, uh, it won't stop ever. So how? what is it about the people who are doing speedruns manually? What about the tool-assisted runs? Um, but I always see it like this, and I think uh, it's it's kind of two sides of a medal, so to speak. Um, I find it especially fascinating watching such tool-assisted speedruns because they're showing me what is really capable with in the confines of the game, even if you have not have the human factor. So we are finished already. We're no? coming up on time. This one was done by Maru. The previous one was done by Janisto and others. There's a whole long list of, of people that have, have done runs in this category, and time. Time. Yeah, that was it. That was all. Oh, okay. The actual time on this, from a console perspective, is 10 minutes 23 seconds. It's also interesting that um, this particular run is being used as the base for a lot of people because uh, back then it worked. So I, I also believed in the beginning that it is a real run, so to speak, because it was very show-offy. Um, we've seen the the auto scroller parts here and all the jumping around and getting the um, lives and everything. So it shows that yeah, look what I can do, so something. But of course, it doesn't have to be necessarily like this. Yeah? Exactly. So we're gonna do. One more thing before we leave uh, okay. Mario for, okay, the I'm... Uh, for for this particular unless there's something else you want to cover for Mario, no, but I have a funny me. feeling you're gonna like this. Um This was something we showed recently at uh, and hopefully this actually works by the way. Okay, let's see. Let's see if it works. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll find out. Uh, so we're gonna run Super Mario Brothers 2 again. And here is the run we are gonna do. See what happens. So this okay. also doesn't need a whole lot of timing. It's the same exact sequence that you saw earlier. Mm -hmm. But we're going to take this in a slightly different direction. Okay, so uh, again with picking up random stuff? Yes. Seemingly random stuff? Seemingly random stuff. W what we did earlier was an arbitrary con uh, code execution, an ace. Arbitrary code execution means that you are able to take over the entire game console, which mm -hmm. we are sort of known for doing at task mm -hmm. video, uh, mm -hmm. at, with task blocks at, at GDQ runs. Before, we jumped to the end credits, but this time we're going to do something slightly different. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, that's a thing. Let's get to the right directory. Uh, it's going to be... Okay, and Let's see if this works. There it is. So we are currently connected to Discord. <laughs> so you just, uh, so to speak, programmed through the controller port uh, a version of Discord, and the NES is getting the internet, and you can have a Discord discussion. Yes. Now, this is, at this time, because it's kind of difficult to connect to a console, mm -hmm. it's kind of a one-way client. Yeah, However, yeah. we're working on an adapter, a method of having the console send data back to TaskBot. Mm -hmm. So, effectively, what we just did is similar to something that has been seen before. Uh, we just connected a Nintendo to the internet through the controller ports, mm -hmm. and we made a Discord client that runs on an original Nintendo. Uh, it's it's very limited. We're using only characters that were inside of Super Mario Brothers 2 itself. Mm -hmm. 
So there's only a few difference. Oh, hey, it's the Moss. Oh, hey, there he is. And now you're, you're actually chatting with other people in the uh, correct Discord channel, and we're seeing this on the screen now. That's nothing pre-prepared here, yeah? For the people outside watching. Yes. So the funny thing is that the Moss 3212, who's here chatting, <laughs> was the one who put together the Python scripting and other work to connect to Discord. Mm -hmm. So he wrote the software side to mm -hmm. get the data in. VI Gray Tech, who is also here somewhere, made the actual code that runs on this console. Now, it mm -hmm. was rushed. We finished it while I was on stage at European Speedrunning Assembly, Whew. already running runs. We had some, some things that weren't quite right. As you can see, there is a graphical bug. When you mm -hmm. get to the bottom of the screen, mm -hmm. uh, it, it moves the line that you were at up, which isn't expected. He's already fixed that, and he's working on much more interesting stuff from here. So uh, it worked out in the end, so you could show it on ESA. We did, yes. Yeah. We showed it during ESA. And that particular segment, just to take a brief pause, and, and you might ask, why are you doing all this? Mm -hmm. That particular segment raised $3,000 for Alzheimer's research all right. in an hour. Great. Which was amazing. The most recent Games Done Quick, Summer Games Done Quick 2019 in Minneapolis, was by far the biggest event that we've ever had from a, a money raised perspective. About, was it over three million this time? The marathon as a whole raised $3 million for the week, which was absolutely incredible. incredible that was right, yeah. money raised for Doctors Without Borders. Uh, I can't pronounce it in French, French uh, correctly. I, I could try. That's like Médecins Sans Frontières, but I can't. That's about it, yeah. yeah something like that. <laughs> yeah. I uh, am very bad with other languages that are not English, but the long and the short of it is that we gave we were given a an hour roughly of mm -hmm. that marathon hour hour and a half mm -hmm. and they put a game called celeste a modern speedrunning game yeah, as worry. an incentive yeah. and the incentive they had was $175,000 $175,000 to see that task and it was met handily that combined with other things we've done in the last uh, seven, six months alone means that in the last six months we've helped raise over 280,000 US dollars for charity. It's been absolutely an incredible it's, year. It's always incre it's incredible how generous, uh, especially speedrunning fans are. Not only the people, and of course the people who contribute for help to to raise so much money for good causes. And so of course it it shows that um, especially people are interested in TAS speedruns. And uh, if you say something like Celeste, which is a very impressive game to to run by yourself, and I almost broke my thumbs playing it because it's pretty difficult, I have to say. But this is stuff where I also say, if I can do something good and donate money and get to see something exciting like this, why not? Exactly. And one thing that's worth saying is most of these types of events, RPG Limit Break, raising money for National Alliance on Mental Illness, mm -hmm. and ESA, GDQ, Calathon, all of these other types of events, MAGFest, they all have a common trait. 100% of the money goes directly to the charity. Mm -hmm. We pay for our own way to get to those mm -hmm. events. So mm -hmm. we don't take the money ourselves. It, there's nothing disingenuous going on here. And that has really felt good because I feel like I've been able to make a meaningful contribution to society through the work I've been doing as the leader of TaskBot. Of, of the entire community. It's, it's exciting what you can do with the love of video games. Exactly. And do so much good. In this particular case, Taskbot as a mascot has led to a huge community that's formed around it. We have 1,800 people on our Discord server. Mm -hmm. Is it okay if I plug it? Of, of course, of course. People plug who are on screen right now are, in fact, at discord.task.bot. If you mm -hmm. want to join our community, by all means, feel free. There are other folks from Germany here. And some of them are, in fact, typing right here. <laughs> uh, there's so much more I could say, but I will close it off here. This is why I do this stuff, because there's an amazing community that helps create content that works with me to make these events possible, does all of the different skill sets, everything from physical board design to working on the actual tool-assisted speedruns, the software in the background, 
it's just incredible stuff, and I'm so thankful for my entire community that helps out. We're also very thankful that you took the time, uh, especially out of doing so much good <laughs> in the world and uh, being around Europe here, um, to show us a little bit at, at our humble abode over here. And uh, we're going to see a little bit more of you um, at a later point because we have some some more stuff here, maybe show it later on. But uh, for now, I want to say thank you. And it has been a pleasure. And um, yeah, we showed uh, you have, of course, your own Twitch channel, but uh, this is, of course, more representative of all the test people. They can visit you at twitch.tv slash Dwango AC. That's correct. Yeah. You have uh, streaming times there, or is it if there's something you're restreaming? I how, wish how it was more consistent. I have a rather complicated life because mm -hmm. this is just what I do on the side. I have a day job to pay the bills. Mm -hmm. So I stream when I can, mm -hmm. but most of what I'm streaming is the preparation for the types of events where we want to do. Mm -hmm. I run one of the most complex Twitch streams anywhere <laughs> from my home. And I highly recommend if you're interested in what you've seen today, by all means, come in, stop by. There's always something fun happening when I am streaming. Most of the content highlights and then end up eventually on YouTube, on mm -hmm. my YouTube channel as well. Yeah. Otherwise, just come over, give at least a follow, and then enjoy the stuff. So thanks again. We're going to see a little bit from you. And thank you for watching.